All right, good morning. Um, my name is Kyle Fisher. I'm the student pastor here at Second, um, a Second Baptist Church. And as uh, Casey mentioned a few moments ago, Pastor Gary um, has gone with a team up in Alaska. Uh, so he asked me to step in. Uh, so you guys get to enjoy me for the next 60 minutes. <laughs> that was a joke. It really didn't go over very well in first service either, so I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but uh, over the past couple months, Pastor Gary's been doing this series on, on rebuilding. And uh, he, he asked us to just take a break from that for a couple weeks. Now, because there's some uh, specific things that he wanted to talk about in the book of Nehemiah. Uh, so this morning, we're going to change things up a little bit and talk about uh, pursuing our purpose. And as you can see on the screen, we're going to be looking at Philippians chapter 3. Uh, but before we dive into all of this, will you guys join with me in a word of prayer? Uh, Lord God, we just thank you for uh, this, just these few moments um, of the week where we can just spend time um, just letting everything go and just worship you and praise you and take time to study your word and just be in, uh, in fellowship as believers. Uh, so God, we just pray during this time that, uh, that your truth will be spoken, God, that your name will be glorified, uh, that great things will happen, and that you will continue to work on our hearts. And we pray this all for the glory of your name. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. So Ralph Barton was, was an artist in the early uh, 1900s. He was, very, he was a very well sought after cartoonist uh, to be exact. Um, and so he was you know, pretty well off. He had just about everything you think you would want during that time. Um, and then one day some people had found him and he had taken his own life. And right next to him on his pillow, he had pinned a note. And on the note it said, I have had few difficulties, many friends, great successes. I have gone from wife to wife, from house to house, visited great countries of the world, but I am fed up with inventing devices to fill up 24 hours of the day. Did you guys catch that in there where he said, I am fed up with inventing devices to fill up 24 hours of the day. So Ralph Barton came to this point in his life where he saw no meaning. He saw no purpose. He saw no hope. He just thought, I'll just keep finding things to keep me busy. And he did that, and eventually that, that came to not be enough, and, and he ended up taking his own life. And I'm, I, I'm, I'm guessing this morning most of us in here aren't at the point where Ralph Barton was at, but I'm sure there have been times where we may have tried to like, sit back and think, what's the point of this life? What, what is my purpose? What, what am I supposed to do here while I'm on earth? Um, I don't want to go through life filling it with empty things. Like I need to live life with purpose. And thankfully, all throughout Scripture, uh, we, read to, we, we can read and come to this one main point, one main theme uh, that the Bible says is our purpose. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go through Philippians 3, and we're going to talk about what this purpose is, um, and then talk some about how we can uh, pursue this purpose that God has called us to live. So if you guys will just join with me in reading tw uh, verses 12 through 14 as we get started. <clears throat> So the Apostle Paul is writing to the church, and he says, Not that I have already obtained this, or am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own, because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. So we read this, and then we ask ourselves, what is our life purpose? Okay, what is our life purpose? Uh, the, the Apostle Paul, he realized that his goal in life was to strive for perfection, to be exactly like Jesus Christ. And he was going to keep pursuing this until, until the day he died. And so based off what, the, uh, what Paul says here to the church and what we also gather from Scripture, we understand that as Christians, we all have this one same life purpose, and that is to pursue Christ-likeness, which will lead us to bring God glory. Okay, so above all else, here, here is our main purpose in life and everything we do. We should be able to look at it and say, am I pursuing Jesus Christ and am I trying to live a life that will lead to bringing God more glory? Now, the way that we all um, end up following Christ and bringing God glory um, may look different in our day-to-day -day things. Like if, you are, if, you, if you're a student in school, um, for you to pursue Christ-likeness obviously means the way you live um, around your classmates or around your teachers and, and trying to help bring God's glory to the way you treat people and react to people. The same if you are working. When you're at work, you can pursue Christ-likeness and through you being a servant and a, and a lover to, towards people in your workplace, you can help bring God glory. Or like how what my parents, whenever um, I was growing up, 
they made it their goal to pursue Christ-likeness. They wanted to show an example to my sister, sisters and I what it looked like to follow Jesus Christ. And through my sisters and I seeing this example, we ended up giving our lives to Jesus Christ also, which led to God receiving more glory because more people were accepting Christ. And so while all of us have this one main purpose of pursuing Christ-likeness and bringing God glory, the way each of us does it may look a little differently. C.S. Lewis, who wrote the Chronicles of Narnia, a um, very intelligent Christian theologian, he once said, The glory of God, and as our only means to glorifying him, the salvation of human souls is the real business of life. So as C.S. Lewis says here, the glory of God is the real business of life, and he encouraged the Christians to remind them that helping save the lost souls helped fulfill bringing God glory, which was the real business of life. And so whether it's you intentionally going to work or trying to reach the lost for Christ or you loving your kids and helping lead them to Christ, whatever it might, might be, these are just ways that we can pursue Christ-likeness, which will lead to us bringing God glory. And I, I can guess that all of us uh, can agree that being like Christ and trying to bring God glory can be difficult at times. Uh, life happens. Things happen in life. You go in your ups and downs. So stuff happens at work or family or with friends. And situations just arise. And in those moments, we can forget that our purpose in life is to be like Christ. We can forget that we should be striving to bring God glory. And so, so the, the next question I want us to be able to answer through looking at the rest of Philippians 3 is how do we pursue our purpose? How do we make sure that we stay on track? How do we make sure that we stay on task and continually follow after Jesus Christ like the Apostle Paul did, and like Scripture calls us out to and commands us to do. <laughs> now, we're going to look at four different things, as you guys can see in your notes, and, and through breaking down the rest of Philippians 3, and I'm talking about these four different things, these are surefire ways for you to be able to continually pursue your purpose and continually pursue Jesus Christ and looking to bring him glory. So let's keep looking um, at verses 15 and 16. we see Paul writes, Let those of you who are mature think this way. And if anything you think otherwise, God will reveal that also to you. Only let us hold true to what we have attained. So here we read that Paul tells Christians that mature people should think this way. Mature people in Christ should, should see that their life's purpose is to bring God glory, is to pursue, is to pursue being like Christ, and, and, and that we should live to the, to the salvation that God has graciously given to us uh, that, we, that we did not deserve. And so a, a principle we can grasp from these two verses is simply that we need to continually grow in spiritual maturity. If we are going to pursue our purpose, we have to continually grow in spiritual maturity. So growing up as a teenager, um, I was everything that people loved about teenagers. I was loud. I was obnoxious. I was annoying. Okay, I was blunt, um, maybe too blunt with people and telling them what I was thinking. Um, but as I, grew, as I continued to grow up, I began to realize that there's times where you should talk and there's times where you really need to be quiet. Uh, there's times to be blunt and honest with people, but there's also times where you should be blunt and honest, but put a little grace in there um, and not be so rude about it. Um, I, as I grown up, I begin to realize there's certain areas in my life that I need to mature in. Now, I am not perfect. I'm a youth pastor, so I am still crazy sometimes and loud and obnoxious, like at church camp this week. I'm sure it'll be insane. But in general everyday life, I have realized that there are times where I needed to grow up and mature and change things about myself. And I think that's just a natural human process that people go through. You mature, you grow up, you realize things. The same thing with Christianity. In our spiritual walk with Christ, we need to constantly keep growing up. Uh, we need to constantly keep maturing in our walk with Jesus Christ. So I want you guys to ask yourselves this question that I've had to ask myself many times. Is that, am I, am I continuing to grow in my spiritual walk with Jesus Christ? Because we can never get to ourselves to a point to where we stop growing. When we stop growing, we stop pursuing our purpose in life. I mean, guys, think about 2018 is over halfway done. Are you different now, July 22nd, 2018, than you were January 1st, 2018? Because if we're continuing to grow, grow in spiritual maturity, that means that we are not the same person that we were seven months ago. That means that we're not the same person that we were two years ago. This means that we're constantly growing and seeking to become more like Christ. Uh, in, in college, my bachelor degree is in religious studies, and so a lot of the classes I took in my undergrad 
dealt with Old Testament and New Testament and, and missions and church history and all that. And so the, the people that were teaching me were guys who had their doctorate degrees. These guys who have studied the scriptures for years, know more, probably learned more in their 10 years of schooling than I will ever learn in my entire life. Very intelligent men. And they would stand in front of us in class and they would tell us moments in life where God helped them realize they still had room to grow. They still had room to grow in being a man of God and to follow the Christian life. And that always kind of inspired me and reminded me that I can never get to a point to where I think I know it all. If these men who, who have their dark degrees, who know so much about Jesus Christ, still have moments where they need to grow in their walk with Christ, who am I to ever think that I've reached the peak, that I've reached the highest point possible? And so as Christians, guys, if we are going to pursue our purpose, we have to look for ways to, keep, to continue to grow. And so I want to ask you, have you been mem- memorizing scripture lately? Do you wake up with the intentionality of looking to serve somebody at wh- where you work at? Do you wake up each day looking to grow some way in your walk with Jesus Christ? If you don't, you will have a hard time pursuing the purpose that God has for your life. Okay, so let's keep reading here in verse 17, where we read, uh, Paul says, Brothers, join in imitating me and keep your eyes on those who walk according to the example that you have in us. So Paul looks at at the the church and says, join in imitating me. Now, when I first read that uh, years ago, I thought to myself, Paul's being a little arrogant. Like he's saying, hey, imitate me, be like me. I would be scared to tell people to be like me because I know me, right? I know that I'm not perfect. I'm sure all of us in here would have a hard time telling some people, hey, be just like me because we know our imperfections. Uh, but, but the Apostle Paul, what I realized, what he is saying here is, he's not saying it in a cocky, arrogant way, be like me, do what I do. What he's saying is, join me in this Christian life. Join me in trying to follow Jesus Christ. And I think what we can gain from this is that we need to understand that we need to walk through life with other Christians. If we're going to keep pursuing our purpose of of following Jesus Christ, we have to walk through life with other Christians. Now, when I say walk through life with other Christians, um, I I don't mean come in here and pick out your seat every Sunday at 11 o'clock and then go home. That's not what I mean. Church and coming together corporately and worshiping together is essential and it's such a huge part of our Christian life. But we can't just come in here at 11, sit down, hear some great worship, hear a great message, and then go home and think that that's enough. We, have to, we are called as Christians to walk through life together, to be there for each other, to help each other out, um, to not feel like we have to go through life alone, but have people who can help us in our highs and our lows. Uh, we need to have people that can pour into us. We need to have people that we can pour into. You know, we don't, we don't offer you guys life groups at 10 o'clock on Sundays and then throughout the week just so you can feel an obligation and a time slot and check mark on your list. We do these things so you guys can have opportunity to grow in your relationships with others in the church while also getting to study scripture, where you can grow and realize that, that you're not alone as you walk through life, that you have other Christians that have your back and are there for you. You know, I, I've told this to people a lot. I have had, I grew up in church, so I've heard a lot of great messages in, in my life. Uh, but I've also, I've had more great conversations with uh, Christians Monday through Saturday than I've had great sermons that I've listened to on Sunday mornings. And so, and what I mean by that is I've had Christians that have gone through life with me, that have poured into me, that I have poured into, that have helped me grow in my walk with Christ. And it wasn't because I waited to talk to them on Sunday morning or waited to hear a sermon on Sunday morning. It was because I knew that they were with me every day of the week and I could always count on them and rely on them. And so, church, I say this uh, not to sound like I'm bashing or anything, but to say if you want to pursue your purpose that God has for your life, we need to walk through life with other Christians who can help us keep our focus and keep ourselves on task in pursuing being like Christ and bringing God glory. Now, let's keep going, guys. Verse 18 through 19. Here we see, For many of whom I have often told you and now tell you, even with tears, walk as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their end is destruction, their God is their belly, and their glory in their shame, with minds set on earthly things. Guys, in in the first few verses that we've read this morning, it's it's almost like Paul's encouraging the church, helping the church, reminding the church of things. And it seems like here in verse 18 and 19, Paul's like cautioning the church. He's like telling them and reminding them, hey, there are a lot of people who are not following Jesus Christ. There are a lot of people who, whose mind is set on earthly things, who are focused on everything else except Jesus Christ. And it's almost like he's warning them and cautioning them to not fall into, into the trap that all these other people are falling into. 
And as he talks about how they have their minds set on earthly things, I, th- I think something we can, we can learn from this is that we need to realize that the material is not the end-all, be-all for our life. The material possessions that we gain here on earth is not the end-all, be-all. It is not what our lives should be about. It is not what we should be pursuing. It is not things that we need pursuing, but Jesus Christ who we need to be pursuing. So Adam, Adam Liebzig, uh, he is a, well, more, most known for producing, like, overseeing films. A couple of them were like Dead Poet Society, uh, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Uh, he helped kind of oversee those, those movies. Um, and I, one time I sat down and I, I listened to him give a talk uh, to a group of people about them finding their purpose in life. And uh, Adam had these five questions uh, that he said, if you can answer these, they will help you figure out your purpose in life. And so he said, who, who, are, who are you? Figure out like, who you are as a person. Figure out what you love to do. Uh, figure out whatever you love to do, who can you do it for, okay? And what do these people need? And then how can, how can you help transform and change, change their life? Okay, so he said, if you can look at these five questions and you can figure them out and answer them, you will figure out your purpose for life. Now, Adam also talked about how he, went to, he was at Harvard and uh, he had his 25th class reunion. And so he, he went to the reunion and he, he met up with a lot of people and talked to a lot of people that he hadn't seen in years. And he said what he came to the realization of is that 80% of the people that he talked to were unhappy with life. 80%. He said that they had, they had the house that they wanted. They had the second house. Uh, that they had all the cars they wanted. They had the wife they wanted, the kids they wanted. They had all these things that they thought would make them happy. That when they graduated college, uh, these were the things that they thought they should pursue after and what life was all about. But now, 25 years later, they're empty. They're trying to struggle to figure out what life's purpose really is and what the meaning of life is. And then he said the other 20% of the people that he talked to who were happy, he said, these are the people, as I talked to them, I could gather that they could answer these questions. Because if you guys look at these questions, the first two are mainly about, um, Adam was saying, is mainly about you, right? Who you are, what you love to do. But then the next three questions are strictly about other people. And so he was saying that, that the people who were happy realized that their life was about is outwardly focused on others and not in, inwardly focused on themselves and what they wanted to do and what they could, all the things that they could gather and obtain in life. And I thought to myself, that's a, Adam didn't say anything about being a Christian, but to me, I was like, that's a pretty solid Christian principle because that's what we are called to do as Christians, to not make life about us, but to make life about loving God and loving others, about serving God and about serving others. And so if we as Christians go through life thinking the material possessions that we gain is all about us, we're going to fall into this trap that the 80% did where they were struggling with life because they made it all about themselves. And so if we make life about ourselves, we're going to make it about all the things that we can gather. And so as Christians, we must realize that our life is not about us at all, but it is about God. That all throughout Scripture and what, the, and what Apostle Paul is talking about here is that as Christians, we need to realize that our life is not about ourselves and all the things we can gather, but strictly about being like Christ and bringing God glory. And we can do those things through loving others and ser- serving others and not making it all about us. Now, the, one of the things that I think is true for most is that we can say, yeah, the material is not the end-all, be-all, but it, it can be hard to remember to do that, to, to have that mindset, because everybody around us is telling us to get more, right? You got to have a better car, better house, better job, and you keep telling you, they keep telling you you have to have more and more and more and better and better and better. So something that we can gather from the end of this passage that will help us is, we, that, is to remember that we have to have the right perspective, Okay, if we want to realize the material is not the end-all, be-all, if we want to keep pursuing our, um, our purpose in life, we have to have the right perspective. Now, thankfully, Paul helps us out, and he tells us what the right perspective is. In verses 20 through 21, it says, But our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body to be like his glorious body by the power that enables him even to subject all things to himself. <clears throat> Here the, the Apostle Paul reminds the church that as Christians, your citizenship is in heaven, that, that you can go through life anticipating and waiting to one day being with Jesus Christ forever and eternity. And so he was reminding them that, hey, your perspective needs to be on forever of Jesus Christ in the future and not on just the here and now and what I can do here on earth for myself. I was at, I was at the gym the other day and, and I, I was bench pressing, and after a few sets, I, I, I 
racked the weight up, and then I was trying to find some five-pound plates to add on to each end of the barbell. And so I sat up, and I looked next to me, and I saw a two-and-a-half-pound plate. And I was like, well, I don't need that. And so I actually got up, and I was like wandering around the gym because I could not find a five-pound plate. I was thinking, what gym does not have five-pound plates to add, on to, uh, not to add on to the barbells? And so eventually I found two five-pound plates. I threw, out the, threw them on the end of the barbell. I did my next set, and I, and I racked it up. Well, I sat up, and I looked over to, to my left, and I saw that two-and-a-half-pound plate that I saw earlier. And I looked, and I realized that the way the two-and-a-half-pound was set up, the size of it, it fit perfectly inside a five-pound plate. So I then looked and realized there was five five-pound plates behind this one two-and-a-half-pound plate. And I was like, are you kidding me? I wandered around the gym, and they were sitting right here next to me the whole time. And then it was like God just kind of hit me over the head and was like, hey, when you just focus on the stuff that you see here in the, in the world, the material, the here and now, the things here, you never focus on the future perspective of Jesus Christ. You never focus on the fact that Jesus Christ is sitting right there next to you the whole time because you're out wandering around, the, wandering around the world pursuing what you think will fulfill your life. And it just made me realize that as Christians, if we just focus on the here and now and just have the perspective of what can I do here and now on earth while I'm here being selfish, instead of focusing on Jesus Christ and what eternally matters, we will never truly pursue our purpose of being like Christ and striving to bring God more glory. I want us to look at a passage in Philippians uh, chapter 3, but I want us to go back to verse 7 and 8. Okay, we're going to look at verse 7 and 8 where, where Paul tells us what the right perspective is. He says, whatever gain I had, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For this sake, I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ. <clears throat> so Paul had it all before he was a Christian. Right? He was a Pharisee. He had the accolades. He had the prestige. He had everything he thought he needed. But when he accepted Christ into his life, his perspective on life completely changed because he realized none of that matters all that matters is Jesus Christ. All that matters is living for Jesus Christ. All that matters is making sure that I pursue Jesus Christ my entire life. Everything else, as Paul says, is rubbish, is meaningless, does nothing for you. It doesn't mean anything. Because his perspective was all that matter with Jesus Christ. Is that our perspective? Do we have that perspective as we go through life, that all that matters right now is Jesus Christ? That all that matters is striving to be like Christ and bring him glory? I want to close this out with a story I read about a broadcaster who, who had three slips of paper, one he put in his wallet, one he put in his pocket, and one he put on his, on his work desk, and he had the same question written on each piece of paper. And the question was, is what you are doing now helping the broadcast? Because he, he knew that he would be at his desk and he would constantly see this question of, is what you're doing now helping the broadcast? Or if he was out and about, if he dug in his pockets or got something out of his wallet, he would see this question of his, what are you doing now helping to broadcast? And so I want to change that question up a bit. And I, I want us to ask ourselves this. Is what you are doing now helping bring God glory? Okay, when you wake up in the morning, you go to work, ask yourself, is what I'm about to do going to bring God glory? As you're at your workplace, ask yourself, is what I'm about to do going to bring God glory? Or if you're in school, when you're at school and you're sitting in class, ask yourself, what is what I'm about to do going to bring God glory? I believe that if we constantly ask ourselves and remind ourselves that bringing God glory is what matters most, it will help us pursue our purpose of ultimately being like Christ, which will lead to bringing God more glory. So church, I want to challenge you this morning, or, you, or ask you this, are you struggling with a purpose? And if so, are you willing to accept the fact that our purpose in life is not about us, but instead about being like Christ and striving to bring God more glory? Let's pray.